Hi, my name is Catherine, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my advanced recipe book, which is hosted on Notion. If you saw my previous video, you would have seen a high level view of my entire Notion dashboard. If you're interested in watching that, this is going to be a compliment to that video. So I highly recommend watching that video first because I do talk a little bit about my recipe board. One of the most highly requested features from my last video was to share a template that has a shopping list built into the recipe book. And I'm very happy to say that I'm going to be providing a template along with this video so that you can use it yourself. It can be very tedious to set up on your own. So I've done all the heavy lifting on that front uh, so that you can enjoy the template. I would say that my two biggest pain points when it comes to organizing my recipes is one, most of my recipes are kind of a conglomerate of recipes pulled from a cookbook like Oh She Glows, which is one of my favorites, and also from websites. Compiling that into one workable system where I can see neatly at a glance all of the recipes and what I'm making visually, that can be very difficult. My second pain point is during my shopping experience at the grocery store, I want my ingredient list to match my directional journey through the store. I don't wanna finish my grocery shop and then realize I have to go back through a bunch of aisles, back to the produce section at the other end of the store to pick up some red onion for my guac. I just want all of it to be sorted according to my personal journey that I typically take through a grocery store. If you're also dealing with these pain points and you're looking for a system, follow along. This is my life hub and if you've seen it before, you would have seen my other video. We're gonna scroll right on down to my recipes list. So this is gonna be an in-depth look at my recipes and how I organize my shopping list and my pantry list and all of that jazz. As you can see, I have my list organized under this heading here called shopping and pantry lists. And below we have the familiar board where I've organized all of my meals based on meal type. So we have the obvious breakfast, uh, we have salad, soups, snack and sides, entrees, desserts, and it goes on and on and on. So when I am choosing my recipes, basically I love looking at it in this format because it's very visual and all of the recipes are represented visually with a cover photo. So say we wanna go into the Southwest tofu scramble. You'll see we have some high level information here, additional information, we have the instructions, we have ingredients under a toggle here. And then at the very end, what I've done is I've created a table which holds all of the ingredients for this specific recipe. Basically, whenever I create a new recipe, I have a template. And if we go here, you'll see what it looks like. We have the recipe name, which would go up here. This will be the name of your card. You can add a cover photo, which would be a photo of that specific dish that you're making. I have the add to grocery list checkbox. So when I check this, what it does is it grabs all of the ingredients from this table and adds it to my grocery list. More on that later. We have meal type. Meal type is what you see at the top of each board here and it helps you to categorize your meals. Then we have label. This helps to further organize your meals. So the categories that I have, obviously you can customize them, but these are the ones that I most frequently look up. The reason the labels are so useful is because sometimes I am thinking about dinner and I'm like, I feel like having Mexican. So then what I would do is I would go to the search bar here and then I would type in Mexican. And because I have that tag, anything that has been tagged with Mexican will then show up. Next up, we have the due date or the scheduled date. This is when I'm planning on making the meal source. This will typically be a web link time, which includes the amount of time to prepare and cook. This is good to have at a glance in case you're looking for something that's really short and doesn't take a lot of time out of your day. Sometimes I assign recipes to either me or Matt. There are other properties here that I typically hide, so the ingredients will show up here. Assigned meal, I will explain in a moment, paired with and related. These are sister properties. So basically with recipes that are related, I like to link them there. So for example, my kale Caesar salad, you'll see that the related dish is the Caesar salad dressing, vegan parm and oven roasted chickpeas. These are things that I like to put in to the salad and that I should be mindful of when I'm making my grocery list. So those are all of the high level properties. Then we can break it down even more granular. So serving size, prep time, cook time, total time, and then I'll have a link here as well. Then I put the instructions. I will put the ingredients here. This is kind of where my 
previous video left off. Essentially, you can just do it the simple way if you'd like, which is to create a to-do list and manually check off items as you get them. But this is where the magic comes in, and this is with the ingredients table. The ingredients table will allow me to populate everything from this specific recipe into a shopping list. Not only are, am I filling out everything here, I'm then duplicating everything under the standalone ingredients list and dragging it into its respective database. Then I have to assign an aisle to everything. This will help to address how to shop by aisle and how to make that process more seamless, but it is a lot of work. It's very tedious to do all of this. Is it a lot of work up front? Yes, absolutely. Does it save me time and frustration and pulling my hair out in the future? Also yes. So it's really kind of an evaluation that you have to make as to whether or not you're willing to put in the work up front, if it's worth it for you to put in the work up front to add all of this information, all of this detail, uh, in order to make your shopping experience a little more seamless in the future. Let me show you how that works. First off, you'll notice that I actually have the add to grocery list property shown here so that I can easily at a glance just like add an item to my list. I also have the amount of time it takes so that anything that's a little bit on the longer side to prepare, I know right away what I'm getting myself into. So say I wanna add stuffed avocados to my scheduled recipe list. You don't have to do this every time, but I often like to make sure that certain things are checked that I know that I have at home and I'll leave them checked all the time. So that would be like salt and pepper, oils, uh, dressings that I already have at home. Sometimes I just like to keep things like that checked at all times. But essentially, if I wanted to add stuffed avocados to my grocery list, then I would just simply tick this box and then I can go up and I can see that the stuffed avocados, I have a lot of stuff scheduled, so don't mind me, but stuffed avocados has been added to my list of queued recipes. I have a lot of other things planned in here. Some do have scheduled dates, some don't. And this is where assigned meals comes in. I spoke about this tag earlier. We're gonna talk a little bit about assigned meals. So once I've chosen sort of an outline of the recipes that I want to make in the week, that's when I'll assign it a meal. I will decide, okay, you know, I'm gonna have the fajitas, maybe I'll have them for lunch. So that really helps me delineate what I'm having at what time of day. The meal type is listed here. You would have seen this already in the board view. You can also assign it from this view and you can also click through to the source. But the view that I really like when seeing my queued recipes is the calendar view because this lets me look kind of from a holistic perspective at my week and really get an understanding of what I'm making when visually. As you can see, I've already scheduled a bunch of my recipes for the week. Uh, we had Crunchwrap Supremes with an all-purpose vegan cheese sauce yesterday. Today, actually, we had kale Caesar salad for lunch. So I do wanna add that in here, but you'll notice the Caesar salad, even though it's showing up over here in the list view, uh, right here, because there's no date, it's not showing up on the calendar. How do we fix that? Well, obviously we could go in and add the date here. If you want to add something to a calendar view that doesn't yet have an assigned date, and you don't wanna be flipping back and forth between these views, you can always go up here to the top right where it says no date. And then it will show you everything that you have ticked a box on for add to grocery list that hasn't got a date yet. So when you click on these, it will automatically add the item to today. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click, and you can see that it's populating on today the 17th. So now from here, it becomes a lot easier to drag and drop meals around. I know, for example, I want the portobello fajitas. I wanna make those for lunch on Friday. And thankfully it already says lunch. I had the kale Caesar salad today, but if I wanted to change it to dinner, and we had it for dinner today, I would just go in here and change it here and get rid of the lunch. But we'll keep it as lunch for now. Um, as for the stuffed avocados, I feel like that would be great tomorrow. And so yeah, that's how I schedule my recipes. I also have a board view. I find this a little messier to look at and it's instead of being divided by category, it's divided by date. And then I also have just a list of only queued dinners, not lunches, not breakfast, only things that have been tagged with dinners. Great, so we can hide this now under its toggle. And we'll move on to weekly staples. You might be wondering how this is different than the queued recipes. I wanted a list for items that don't belong to a recipe, that are just single items that you pick up, like a chocolate bar, for example. 
that you pick up at the grocery store and you might want to get on a weekly basis. Okay, now, lo and behold, we now arrive at the shopping list. As you can see here, this is a synced block. The reason for this is because I have it synced with the actual shopping list page. I've created a shopping list standalone page because often when I'm grocery shopping, I'm doing it on my phone. Having a full width page like this instead of hidden under a toggle really improves the mobile experience. So that is why I have a synced block which will sync across both views of the shopping list. This is going to populate every single ingredient that belongs to a recipe that you've checked as add to grocery list. And this is because of the filters that I've set up. Added to grocery list is checked or the recipe is empty. This rule here helps to account for my weekly staples, which will not have a recipe because they don't belong to a recipe. So this rule helps to tackle that issue. Let's break down this ingredient list here. First and foremost, we have everything sorted by aisle. And this is according to my grocery store that I currently shop at. And the direction that I take going through my specific store really helped to inform how I would sort this table. So I have produce first. Next, I have dairy and meat canned jar goods, dry baking goods, condiments and dressings, spices and seasoning, beverages, oils, and other. Next, I have got it. So if I grab green onions and I put it in my cart on my phone, I then go, oh, okay, I have green onions, got it. And I will check it, which makes it disappear from the list. It's so satisfying. If you accidentally check something, you can always go to the in pantry view, which will show you all of the things that you've allegedly put in your cart. This is also sorted by aisle. If you want to know what recipe this belongs to, if you're like, why did I need red onion again? Oh, it's for the crunch wrap. And how am I gonna prepare these cherry tomatoes? Okay, we're gonna have them whole or halved. I'll show you quickly how the formula works, but essentially what I've done, let me open up. I'm gonna show you the properties that I've hidden. If you're wondering about how I got these ingredients to automatically populate based on whether or not I checked a box in my recipe database, this is how. This isn't necessary for you to understand because I'm giving you a template, but for those who are curious, I first created a relationship between ingredients and recipe by using a relationship property. So that is here. Essentially what this means is that I synced them. Because there's already a relationship between the ingredients database and the recipes database, as you can see here, all I needed to do from there was go and create a roll-up property. Let's make a new one, for example. So say I wanted to do this from scratch, added. We're just gonna call this something different. Added to list. In terms of the type of property, we're gonna make it a roll-up. And what a roll-up does is it grabs a property from another database. So in terms of the database, I'm gonna choose recipe database. And the property right now, it's auto-populating the name of the recipe, which we don't want. We want to pull up whether or not that specific recipe that it belongs to has a check mark in add to grocery list. So I'm gonna click that. And as you can see, I've replicated what I'd previously done. And this is as simple as it is to create a roll-up function that will support your ability to automatically add ingredients to this list. And as you guessed, the filter is what makes this really work. As you can see, added to grocery list is checked. That is what determines whether or not an ingredient populates in this table. Great, so as you can see, we have a to buy list. Once something's in your pantry, it's in your pantry. Hopefully once you're done your grocery trip, this is all empty. I also have a list view if I just wanna look at it in a giant list. I don't find it particularly useful, but some people like to see it. So I wanted to provide that option. All right, so just to wrap up, once I've finished all of my recipes for the week, I've done my grocery shop, I've made all the recipes that, that are queued up, what happens now? Usually what I will do is I will go into my queued recipes and I will just uncheck. I will typically clear the date because I don't want it showing up wrong in my calendar next time I wanna make a crunch wrap. And then I will also uncheck it from the add to grocery list, which essentially removes all of the ingredients from my shopping list automatically because suddenly it's not fulfilling the roll up feature. Say in a week I want to make a crunch wrap again. I'll add it to the grocery list, but you'll notice, you'll notice that the ingredient list for the crunch wrap still have some items checked under the ingredients. 
And this is one of the limitations of this method. There is no catch-all method as it stands right now to automatically uncheck all of the ingredients from this property type. But at the end of the day, what I'll do is when I re-add it to my grocery list, I will go up and look at my shopping list. I will really have a look at what's in my pantry as well because some of the items that have previously been checked will still be checked. We wanna make sure that it's updated. This is when I'll go and actually physically look in my pantry and be like, what do I have? What don't I have? And I will uncheck things. I will, and then if I realize, oh no, I do have this, I'll go back and check it. So you can kind of play with it. But really what you should be doing, whenever you add a new recipe, you should be checking your to buy. You should be checking your in my pantry to get an inventory of what you do and don't have. So that kind of wraps up my advanced recipe book. I hope this was helpful and you should definitely be checking out the template that I have provided below in the description box. Let me know what you liked about this video and where there could be improvements. And also please share with me some inspiration on what you've done with your Notion board. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.